Hello, my name is Audrey Scanlon. I'm the Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Central Pennsylvania, coming to you on the 16th of December, Friday in the year 2022. Making this video, of course, on Thursday, on a day in which I have not honestly moved from this chair in my living room. And so I thought that I would just, instead of trying to find a novel place to make my video from, I would just stay put and um, speak to you from the place where I have done probably four different Zoom meetings today, typed about 30 emails, and worked on a number of different projects. It's been a, a long day, a day in which I was supposed to be up in Mansfield in our northern tier, and also in Williamsport, uh, meeting with clergy groups in both of those places, but the weather had different ideas, and so I stayed put at home and have had actually a pretty productive day uh, as it's been sleety and icy and a little bit of snow out there. Now it's just cold and dripping. So here we are. We are approaching the fourth Sunday in Advent now, and I thought that it would be helpful to reflect with you in our continuing series about what it is that we do to prepare for the coming of Christ in this season. We've talked about having a vision uh, when we prepare for something. We've talked about how it is that uh, we issue invitations when we prepare for an event. Last week we talked about um, cleaning a little bit, about the idea that in order to be prepared for the coming of Christ, some of us um, enter into a process, a ritual of confession. That can be a, a one-time confession, or it can be a daily confession, as is um, part of the daily office that many of us read. And today I thought it would be helpful to talk about just some of the the hustle and the bustle that we undertake in this season and, and reflect on that a little bit. So many of us are uh, moved to engage in holiday shopping because we want to give gifts to people whom we love and it's a way to show our appreciation, often for service that we receive through the course of a year. So whether it's an employee that we are honoring with a gift or a a uh, mail carrier or um, maybe the, the person who, who mows your lawn. <laughs> There's lots of ways that we show our appreciation at this time of year uh, by, by reaching out and offering gifts. There are many of us who like to give gifts in the form of um, cookies, or I, I make a giant, giant batch of granola on this past Monday. I spent two hours just making granola in our house, and I think I used about 18 cups of oatmeal, plus lots and lots of nuts and fruit and seasonings. So I'll be bagging that up and giving that as gifts this year. Um, I've made my fair share of cookies also. We have our family favorites that we take out to our kids in California. Um, and then there's the process of decorating, there are holiday parties, there are always concerts. I went to a beautiful Advent program at our cathedral last night, St. Stephen's Episcopal um, Cathedral School, uh, put on a, a presentation that was uh, lessons and carols. And I have to say that it made my heart glad to see the cathedral filled. There are about, oh, I'm going to guess about 125 students at St. Stephen's School. And there they were with their families, um, grandparents, little siblings. And so it was just wonderful to see the good news of the Christmas story being brought to, to lots and lots of people. It was, a, it was a great event. There was, of course, lots of singing by the kids and, and some of the best readers I've heard in a long time. There's a lot of preparation in this season that goes on that we can't see. It might not take the shape of a cookie or a card or a holiday event, 
but some spiritual growth that goes on inside of us. We don't often recognize the growth that goes on inside of us because either we're too busy doing everything else to slow down and um, reflect on how we are preparing, how we are getting ready for Jesus, how God is moving in us, or we are people who are so accustomed in our incarnate way uh, to seeing things as they happen, as they literally take shape and develop in front of our eyes, that when the transformation is internal, it can be more difficult to recognize and to see and to notice. I was thinking, I have a show and tell item. I was thinking about this little project that I've been working with this Advent in our family. We have a tradition of exchanging amaryllis bulbs at Thanksgiving. And I was in Connecticut for Thanksgiving at my brother's house. And so we all exchanged our amaryllis bulbs and then came home and planted them. And mine has taken forever, forever to take off. Usually by the time we get to Christmas, it's, it's already grown up and, and flowering. But this one, I don't know if you can see, this one has just started just in the last two or three days, has started its, its growth out from the bulb. It kind of came with this much green. In the last couple of days, it's sprouted up a little bit. But for the last couple of weeks <laughs> since Thanksgiving, I have planted this bulb. It has sat on my kitchen counter. I have looked at it every day. I have wondered out loud and under my breath about whether anything was taking place. And then I was rewarded with this beautiful little, it's actually two, two little um, green shoots that are coming up. And I know that as the weeks progress, well, I guess it's just a week now, isn't it, to uh, the Christmas event, that that amaryllis will grow and that there will be a flower. There will be that beautiful blossom at the end. You may not be seeing the fruit of your spiritual devotion, your prayer, your uh, listening for God. You might not see that yet, but I would encourage you in this Advent season to know that God is coming, God is present, and that like that green shoot from the amaryllis bulb, that God will bear fruit in you. I'd like to close with a prayer in our prayer book, of course, and this one is a prayer for quiet confidence. O God of peace, who has taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved, in quietness and in confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your spirit, lift us, we pray you, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, you might have just heard my oven timer go off. I am going to get out of this chair and go and um, put my dinner in the oven. That was the preheat sound. So I'm ready to get out of this chair for the day and to uh, move into my evening. Next week, you will have a message from me that will be a short extract of my um, Christmas message, which will also be coming out in the form of a letter. Until then, may God bless you and guide you and keep you always.